Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mr. Clerk, would you please take roll call? Dave Abdallah. Here. Bill Bazzi. Here. Robert Constant. Absent. Lisa X. Clayton. Here. Denise Milanowski Maxwell. Here. Ray Muscat. Absent. Tom Wetzel. Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like to ask Monica Jackson to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. First item we have is agenda approval. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Move to approve order of business March 26, 2019, regular meeting of the Dearborn Heights City Council as presented. Support. Support by Councilman Adela. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have approval of the minutes. These are the minutes from the regular meeting of March 12, 2019. Madam Chair. Councilman Adela. I move that we approve the minutes for March 12, 2019 as itemized, itemized in item 4A. Support. Supported by Councilman Hicks. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Councilman Bazzi is opposed. Next item on the agenda is public hearing and comment on agenda items. I ask that it be limited to the current agenda, two minutes, state your name and your address. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council Chair. My name is Joe Hashem. I'm a resident of Dearborn Heights. Uh, I reside at 26560 Wilson Drive. I have two minutes to uh, do uh, my, uh, to talk, but I will only take one minute and 40 seconds. I have four items to discuss on the agenda. The first three items is 7A, 7B, and 7C. I'd like to thank all three directors for following the procedure and the protocol by doing the RFPs and going out for fair bids, as requested by City Council. Number two, I'd like to talk about item 11A, uh, which is on the agenda. I'm not an attorney, and I'm not going to talk about legality or politics about this particular item. However, I have some points that I'd like to make to City Council. First of all, an open-ended contract is a mistake and is in no way um, is a no-no in an agreement or contract. It is in Law 101. You don't do an open contract. Um, it is like a black hole with no bottom. Once you step into it, you can sink into it without any restrictions or end up or an end to the cost of that particular item. That cost will ultimately cost you and will call the residents of Dearborn Heights. The Honorable Council body has made it very clear to every department and every director that everything needs to be bidded out in a fair bidding process. Item 11D, by your own rules and by your, by your own precedent, it requires that you do a request for a proposal, which is an RFP, and then go out for bids. Fair process bidding. The rules that you impose on every department <coughs> applies to you as well as <clears throat> us with no exceptions. Please write the RFP and go out for bids. Stay transparent in front of the public and in front of the city. Finally, as a resident choosing a law firm and an accountant firm without fair bidding process and with no set budget is unacceptable to me as a resident. It violates every policy this honorable council body has been preaching since it came to power. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Kim Constant and I'm the Assistant Parks and Recreation Director. Um, today on the agenda, I'd just like to bring your attention to our new smart bus that we uh, actually have finally receiving. Um, it's on the smart property right now. And um, I wrote the grant in the summer of 2017 and we finally are receiving our bus. Yes, I'm very happy. I know the seniors will be very happy too. Um, it was a $96,000 bus and um, it um, 
uh, is 32 feet and it uh, seats 28 passengers. So it's going to help us save money and take a lot more trips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Um, before we go any further, I'd like to <coughs> say that we have Councilman Constant with us now. Mr. Clerk? Yes. So no. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Gary Mayotki, Plainfield Street. Uh, however, I'm speaking to you as Corp Counsel with regard to item Charge 11A. Um, my comment is basically that while uh, there are many legal problems with this item, I am going to focus on what I consider to be the most significant, which is unless this resolution and the proposed relationship and divisions are substantially changed, the resolution, the relationship will violate the city charter, the Michigan Rules of Professional Conduct, Governing Attorneys, and potentially the Open Meetings Act. Uh, the um, proposal uh, would violate city <coughs> charter uh, section 5.13J, uh, which provides, excuse me for a moment here, uh, the mayor or the city council may retain special legal counsel to appear of counsel to the corporation council for the purpose of assisting the Corporation Council for a special matter and for such limited time and purpose as the Mayor or Council shall specify. Uh, the proposal, instead of uh, doing anything to assist Corporation Council or deal with a particular legal matter, would instead have legal counsel simply uh, be retained to subcontract with accountants without any assistance provided whatsoever. Um, if the intent is to uh, sign a contract later, then there's an additional problem under the city charter, and that uh, section 9.5 of the city charter says that all contracts prior to submission to the council shall be reviewed by the mayor, and no such agreement has been provided. Further, it would appear to violate the Open Meetings Act, where the actual decisions regarding the contract would be made outside of a council meeting. In particular, there is nothing contained in this resolution that says what anyone is supposed to get paid. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, this is a very big problem, particularly with respect to the lawyers getting paid to essentially act as a broker for accounting services. Um, I would also note that the proposed uh, relationship and resolution all of, uh, also violates the Michigan Rules of Professional Conduct. Okay, at this point we're at two minutes. Your time limit is up and I'm sorry. Okay. It's a little over funny. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, at this point <clears throat> let's move on to consideration yes. of bids. I'm sorry, no, fund transfers and current claims. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks-Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Move to approve the current yeah. claim funds and transfers 6-1 through 6-33 as presented. Support. Support by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Abdullah. Um, I had a question for Chief Baltatorni. It was on item 618. Um, the question I had on this one, there was some repairs done by Matt's Auto Service to some vehicles, and, and I, I just want to get a clarification on this. Some of the vehicles were, I noticed, I know I noticed this was requested by the police department, but some of the vehicles at least didn't appear to be police department vehicles. So, like, for example, there's a Nissan Altima on the second page, and then there was another one, uh, the Ford Fusion, 15, 2015 Ford Fusion. So I was just curious, are those still police cars, or what was the situation there? Those are cars assigned to our investigators. Yeah, we would... The investigative uh, fleet. Please don't disclose these vehicles. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Point of order. Is the allowed Excuse me. Point of order. Point of order, please. Okay, is there any further discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman? Uh, Councilman Bazzi? Um, okay, item 610, what is that uh, invoice? Uh, it says uh, rep and maintenance equipment for $115,000 to the state of Dearborn. Uh, the invoice doesn't have uh, anything associated with it, what kind of repairs, what kind of equipment they maintain. That is the contract for the um, computers. Why is it going out of the uh, water fund, computers for which department? 
Madam Chair. Or am I Councilor incorrect? Constant? I'm not we, done. we share through a joint uh, well, agreement. I think we're asking the department. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, um, this is the service for Dearborn IT to handle all of the IT for the whole building, so we break it up between the water, the city. So it's, it's, it's broken up between the water, police, and the city. 25 is to water and uh, 90,000 is to the other departments. Okay. okay um, second one, 631, why isn't that? Uh, 631, principal interest due various bonds to the basin. Uh, 312,000, 50,000, 24,000. Why isn't that charged to the CSO overcharge? I think that qualifies under the Miller and Canfield letter. Yes. I don't know why is it uh, being charged to the water department and not the CSO Mr. overcharge. Mr. Mayor, would you like to answer? Yes, to me. Would you like? Or anybody. Director Vance, my controller Vance. These are debt payments. And okay. I think eventually it does get charged. That money is on a balance sheet, and this is an expenditure. So you have to post the expenditure, and then it lowers the amount of the balance sheet. I don't know. Why isn't it done now, though? And how, how do we assure it? would be proper accounting to charge it directly. Okay, That's Madam Chair, may I ask a follow-up question to that, please? Council so just for Clayton. clarity, because I understand the accounting principles. And what, to Councilman Bozzi's point with the CSO, the overcaptured millage, which is approximately over $3 million, that ultimately would be paying down out of that, correct? Yeah. Because that is what Miller Canfield's opinion letter said. Okay, thank you for that point of clarity. Okay, any further discussion? Any further discussion on fund transfers and current claims? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Councilman Bazzi is opposed. Next, we have consideration of bids for Library Director McCaffrey, advertised for bids for Carolyn Kennedy Library Teen Area Carpet Replacement. Madam, Met, oh, I'm sorry. Quiet, please. Oh, thank you. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Move to concur with Dearborn Heights Libraries Director Michael McCaffrey on his request authorizing to go out for bids for the carpet at the Carolyn Kennedy Library. This is for the teen area as outlined in 7A. Support. Support by Councilman Costin. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. <coughs> Yes, Councilman Abdel. Yeah, ju just just want to say that it, it's it's gotten pretty bad in there, so I'm glad they're they're going ahead and doing that. Uh, where's the director at? Oh, there, there he is. Will we be using the same company that we used before? Remember? Well, we're going to be going for an open RFPs, RFP, right? RFP, and uh, they'll probably submit a bid, so we'll see what happens. Because I know you were happy with our services on the other section, and this is the one where, as I recall, they don't have to lift the. The, the, the shelving, is that correct? Uh, there's some lifting, um, but it's not as much as, as the other area. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor, <laughs> say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have under consideration of bids, Ordinance Director McIntyre requests four proposals for grass cutting services. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that we concur with Director Jack McIntyre of the Ordinance Department looking to seek out requests for proposals, RFPs for grass services including both the city owned properties and private properties are in violation of the grass ordinance and therefore he is requesting that we authorize the City of Dublin Heights to seek proposals for grass cutting services as outlined in item 7B. Second. Support. Supported by Councilman Bazzi, is there any discussion? All those Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Councilman um, Bazzi first. Bazzi? Um, can we get also uh, DPW uh, to come back? Uh, since we're sending it out for RFP, can we get DPW to give us a quote as, as well to see what would it take to keep it in-house? Is that possible? Thank you. Um, I don't know. Uh, 
Well, this was put in by Director well, McIntyre. Well, I understand, but oh, okay. DPW yeah, would have I'm to sorry, give yeah, us an right. RFQ as well. Is it well, possible? I had a, actually had a meeting with some of the union folks this, uh, this morning regarding some things like that, and one of the challenges, the uh, staffing levels and certainly the uh, condition of some of the equipment. So uh, my suggestion was that we go out this year uh, for the bid to Get to keep on the grass, keep proactive on it, but through this year, evaluate what our needs are and how we could do it in-house more effectively and efficiently. Thank you. Thank well, you. You're welcome. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Public Service Administrator Selmy, request for proposals for tree maintenance services. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks-Clayton. Mm, thank you, Madam Chair. Move to concur with DPW Director John Selmy and authorize the City of Durban Heights to seek proposals for tree maintenance service, including trimming, removing, and stump grinding, as outlined in 7C. Support. Support, Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Uh, uh, same thing with this item, if we could uh, also see what, what it would take for DPW. I saw they were out uh, Friday. They did an excellent job trimming trees. So I'd like to see DPW do the work as well. And again, this is gonna be a supplement to, to that operation. Uh, my understanding that the trees have been an issue here and it's been backlogged for a period of time. So this will help us focus to get caught back up. Uh, the current equipment is not adequate enough. Uh, I know there's a new truck on the way. Uh, in the upcoming budget, I have put some capital requests in there for some more equipment for them to be effective and efficient in those operations. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, under reports from mayor, we have a running fit annual Martian Marathon, April 13, 2019. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move we concur with Mayor Dan Poletko and authorize the running fit uh, marathon for Saturday, April 13th, 2019, starting at 6.15 a.m. in Heinz Park, as outlined in 8A. Support. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, appointment to the Commission on Women and Girls. Um, that should be yours. <laughs> Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I move to, um, you know, this is mayor appointment, so we're concurring with the mayor. Um, or is it a received note and file? It's a received note and file, but. Received note and file, and congratulations to those appointees. There's a few of them here tonight, including uh, Nancy Breyer and, and Dana Muhammad. So thank you, and um, that's my motion. Move. Support. Support. And by also Councilman Laura Abdella. DeVore oh, is uh, being appointed. Oh. Wonderful. Where's Laura? Thank you. Support thank by you Councilman Abdella. Yes. Oh. Yes, oh, and that's, that's as outlined in 8B. Yes, of course. Yes. Is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, just uh, while well, I chose three, these were all people who were very interested in it, and I knew Dana was still interested because we've been. I have other um, names, and I will be, my plan is to bring those to the next meeting. Some of them had expressed an interest months ago. I have to see if they're still interested, so that's why they're not included. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Uh, I'll be very brief. I want to say thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pletko, for your work and your efforts. Thank you to those who have submitted their letters of interest and having an interest in this very important commission. Um, this is something that, again, Ms. Muhammad, thank you for coming to me, giving me the opportunity to work with you. And the entire state, by the way, is on board in watching and have come to help us along with the commissioner from my suburb or county in Cleveland, Ohio. So it's been a journey and we are glad to be here. So thank you. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next we have under reports from city officials, City Clerk Pushavitz liquor license renewal. Madam Chair. I uh, move that we uh, thank the clerk for uh, making up this list and and uh, spend some time reviewing it uh, uh, and updating us on the status of the 
um, <clears throat> uh, liquor licensees in the city of Dearborn Heights. And uh, uh, is this sort of just a received note and file? It is a received note and file unless you would like to um, receive note and file and review and uh, the, the businesses that might be deficient. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Lisa Hicks Clayton, Councilman Hicks Clayton. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. <coughs> Councilman Abdella. Um, I looked at some of these and I spoke with uh, the clerk Walter about uh, some of these and, and first of all I want to thank the clerk and his staff for putting this together. They sent us a lot of detailed information in regards to some of these. Um, I personally have a problem with, um, you know, as much as I'm pro-business and I like for a lot of business development in the city. I, you know, I have some concerns when I looked at some of the details, and I don't want to sit and, and, and disclose them here, but some of the businesses owe quite a bit of money. So at this particular point, I would like to point out that maybe we could do this like we did last year, maybe have our council send out letters, like final letters to some of these businesses that they got to pay up whatever's owed before we can not only allow them to continue in their business, but obviously renew their licenses, unless we have made some sort of arrangements, because I know sometimes cities make arrangements with certain people if they have some sort of hardships. But if there's no arrangements made, you know, I, I know we gave people, um, we made arrangements when the economy was bad, but thank God the economy is much better now, and people gotta pay what they owe, whether it's water, whether it's, without disclosing who they are, whether it's water, whether it's taxes, whether it's licensing fees, controller fee, I mean, there's all kinds of fees, and there's four specific businesses that I think we should send a final warning to, and then from there make a, you know, yeah. make their decision. Um, Council it, Miyake. Thank you, and, and um, actually the ordinance requires that type of a review. Beautiful. And um, I should note that last year, after you sent the letter, every one of them came back fine except one because they all paid up. And then that one was one that was, there's a Michigan tax tribunal matter that's going on, which doesn't necessarily prevent us from doing something, but it does complicate things. Oh, it is settled? And they still haven't paid? And Treasurer Riley actually did a seizure with regard to that business? No. Yeah, you did not. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, at this time, it probably should be referred to me to end up sending a letter to uh, whoever is found to be deficient. That's what I would recommend. I totally agree. Councilor Bassey? Okay, so this, I guess this question is for the clerk, uh, Sir Clerk. So are we approving this here minus the three or are we approving all of it? Well, th there's there's no need to uh, to approve it, Councilman. It's a report, so you you can receive note and file and then refer the deficient businesses to the counselor to um, pursue um, under the charter um, uh, his notification to them of their deficiencies. Right, and it'll be under the ordinance, the, the review With ordinance. The charter, excuse me, the, the Sorry. ordinance yeah. and the charter. <clears throat> Okay, so I guess we saw some disconnect with uh, right now with uh, what's got, what's actually going on with those three. So who's doing the follow up? What's the next step? Next step would there's be a lot to of money to, me. to the city. Yeah, the next step would be to refer to uh, to me uh, the the liquor licenses uh, licensees that have deficiencies uh, for me to send a communication. You could say. Like last year, I don't recall what the time period was, but we could make it the same time period. I think it was a reasonable time period that we had. And then, um, you know, if everything works out like last year, everyone will be paid except for the one. But if we still have the one, then I think we need to end up making the threat more significant. And uh, then I'll re bring it back to uh, the body, um, submitting it through the mayor and to the city clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilman Constant. And, and, you know, if one of the businesses has been really behind copying the uh, Liquor Control Commission and letting them know they're, you know, not in compliance and possibly some action being taken on their liquor license. Yeah, well, because no, if it, they go out of business, we'll never see any of the money. You could very well be right. That was part of the reason for this ordinance in the first place. So. Okay, thank you. Councilman Abdella. Um, Council Miyat, I, I would just like to suggest that it be no later than 30 days unless some special agreement is made between the city and them. Because, you know, they've been given obviously multiple, okay. if you want to call them warnings. 
I mean, if that's, they know if that's what the body wants. Yeah, days. I mean, I mean, I'm, you know, tax is owed. I mean, you owe taxes, water bill, you owe the water bill. <clears throat> and if they don't come to the city to try to make some sort of arrangement, you know, if somebody's, you know, going through hard times, I get it. But then at that point, I know the city sometimes will work with people on, in so, certain circumstances. But when they don't work with the city and, and there's no type of arrangement, then 30 days should be plenty, in my opinion. Okay. If the council agrees. Well, then I'll... Then I'll Send the letter accordingly. I'll update it. We'll use a 30-day time period, and then you'll uh, receive information on what happened. But last last year was, I think, pretty successful. Okay, other thank than you. The further one. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. The ayes have it. Next, we have Treasurer Riley, American Express Corporate Services Commercial Account Agreement. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdullah. I move that we concur with uh, Treasurer John Riley II. Uh, the City of Dayburn Heights is using an American Express card to pay our prior our prior waste hauler waste management and to earn reward points approximately va approximate value of twenty thousand dollars per year. At the time we used GFL was hired, our waste our waste hauler, they did not accept uh, American Express at the time, and now GFL does accept American Express. So he is suggesting that we pay the bills through American Express, at which point that we will earn a bonus of $14,000 in addition to reward points earned as outlined in item 9B. Support. Support by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? Sure. Councilman Bazzi? Okay, so I guess a few, few questions on this one here. Um, how do we pay GFL? I mean, they're they're currently oh, have the contract. We were paying them by check, and then when we became aware that they accept the American Express, I'm now using the American Express card to pay them, so we earn the points. And then we also are um, have the ability to earn this fourteen thousand dollar bonus. So why not? We put on the American Express card, we pay it off the next month, and that's what we did when we had waste management. And I think we currently have like thirty five thousand dollars of points available on the card, and we've already spent quite a bit on it so it's kind of like a win-win for us <laughs> so I guess the second question with uh, having to go in front of the council for a certain amount so is this going to go in front of the council for every well month no it doesn't you know because that's a set contract so, we, so we're just paying the contract so we don't put we never put the waste management or GFL contract uh, bills on the council agenda because you guys have a contract we're just paying them according to the contract and so those haven't come before the council in the past, at least that's the way it's been traditionally. If okay, I might, so when we use the points, we've always come back to the council. Oh, yeah, the points have never been used without the council's that's approval. That's correct. Okay. If, that's what, if that's what you're asking. But if you're, I thought you were asking about the GFL bill or the waste management bill. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is Police Chief Both Attorney request to purchase and pay for one canine. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I move we concur with our Police Chief Dan Both Attorney and approve the purchase for the canine dog and accompanying equipment as uh, outlined in 9C. Or Supported by Councilman Abdella. Um, I guess I have a few questions for the chief. <clears throat> now, I understand we have another canine dog. Are we going to be retiring that one? That is the anticipated plan. The uh, canine handler was promoted to sergeant. Well, there's some uh, contractual issues with that. So this is to replace. Right, because I know they can't really be retrained for a new owner. Correct. And so it, it's not guaranteed. Also, too, um, after it's retired, what will happen to it? It'll stay with the canine handler. Okay, because um, I have a few suggestions that maybe in the future, well, first of all, we probably want to sell the dog to the owner because that would relieve the city of liability, um, even if it's for a dollar, just so there's a sale and we're no longer part of that dog's ownership. Um, another thing I had checked into is, um, shoot, what was I going to say? You know, you might want to ask them that if that they do take the dog with them, that they agree not to be used for any monetary gain, you know, after they take it. Just use it as a pet and just take it. You so know. there are a canine handler agreement that's already in effect. Um, we will review that and 
review your recommendations also see if yeah it's just it's, it's sort of to protect us too and then if we whoever we have for this new canine, canine handler can we make a suggestion like most of the cities do is they keep they have the canine handler sign an agreement not to take a promotion or retire for five years once they because when you take a year to train a canine and then you, you know you move on I, I get it he moves on um, but to avoid this in the future of buying another canine in two years it might help you know, well, it, we'll take that into consideration. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair. Councilman Carson. And the canine and the accompanying equipment is going to be paid for with drug forfeiture money, not city <clears throat> tax payer money. That's correct. Right. Also, uh, Chief, I think you mentioned the new dog would be much better equipped or be able to handle as far as marijuana cases. Isn't that correct? You were telling me? It'd be, it wouldn't be imprinted with the marijuana scent. So it. The current dog is imprinted with marijuana, so he has limitations. That's why we're, uh, he's also being phased out. <coughs> New dog will not be imprinted with marijuana. Yeah, you're saying something about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Chair. Councilman. Chief, could you uh, explain to me the um, necessity or the not, not a necessity to have a warranty? You have one of the uh, dogs comes with a warranty and the other two don't? Chief? I think he's referring to yeah, our I've, I've been looking at the uh, so the one mid Michigan company offered a warranty the other two didn't um, the overall package with K9 ATF was better with uh, training the uh, location of training so those were the uh, considerations that were taken in effect so do they offer any kind of warranty uh, at no. all no nothing at all because if the dog dropped dead the next day it is our loss? I yeah, believe so. Hmm. They do pick I up mean, the dogs, though. They're healthy and they're really picky. And, you know, they know the. There may be other avenues to recoup any losses if that extreme action was to happen. Um, we would. We have do we have insurance on them? No. No. One of, one of the big keys, council member, is that uh, if we went with Mid Michigan Eaton Rapids, because there's a lot of training that's done, so it would seem more logical to either pick K9 ATF and Taylor because of the closer location, or Oakland Academy rather than Mid Michigan because uh, he'd be traveling some distance for continuing updating and training. And that takes uh, an officer out of duty, and so we would just soon have it closer to our location. Typically, how many days is an officer uh, expected to do, go through training? The training, according to the Supreme Court, is 16 hours a month. 16 hours a month. <coughs> and they go one time a week through that company, because I checked. <coughs> That's I think correct. we've had dogs through K9 ATF before, haven't we? The current, the current dog was through K9 ATF. Yeah, and it was uh, fine and acceptable. Well, I understand the training program for, through this one is really good because of the fact that they go once a week. Some of them will have you go maybe twice a month, and dog loses it in between. It's more consistent. Well, when um, it's when it's once a month, it's the onus is put back on the handler <clears throat> to maintain the training during the during the weeks that they're not at training with the other members right but they still so, have to do their 16 hours a month so yeah that can be done you don't have to be with a, a group to do get the credit you can do the training on your own okay thank you any further questions Madam chair just one last item no. chief uh, the marijuana imprint says optional but not encouraged are you is, uh, is that is that I know it's optional but is there an additional cost with this no, there's no additional costs. Are we going to go with the marijuana imprint? No. Why not? That's pretty much legal in the state of Michigan. Right. It's legal if you carry a certain amount of ounces. But you got a car, you pull over, and it's got 20 pounds in the trunk. That's still never going to be legal. Not your lifetime or mine. And that would, you know, help us so, to recoup some of our money. Because let's say you raid that car, and they've got cash in there. 
City of Dublin Heights gets to keep wanna, the cash too. I wish to, I wish it was that simple, but these aren't do that. Um, issues that should be discussed like this. There's different options on what's available, how money is seized, how cars are seized, how the rest are made. Right, but when there's but drugs involved, it, it's that, excuse me, point of order, please. Yeah, please do. So I would please encourage do. it. I mean, just. Please, please do that. Okay, point of order, sir. All right, I'll be quiet. But Thank you. I Madam you Chair, Council, Council Chair, if, if I may. Um, the difficulty is, yes, if there's 20 pounds of marijuana, then there would be a problem. The difficulty is, is that that wouldn't be sufficient probable cause. Uh, or an articulable suspicion that criminal activity is afoot because essentially the marijuana smell just in and of itself in the trunk would not be the basis to end up making a stop without there being some sufficient additional cause to believe that it would be the 20 pounds as opposed to some amount which is allowed under Right, you're only allowed to carry 2.5 ounces for personal use and transport 10 to 10.5 ounces. Yeah, but the dog would not be able to distinguish the quantity or the weight of, of marijuana, just the smell, and then we would potentially have someone being stopped, searched, and then we would end up having a lawsuit. Okay. Madam Chair. Councilman Council. I don't, uh, Chief, we're, we're not going to be using this dog mainly to go sniffing around the city looking for marijuana. The dog's being used for other things, correct? They uh, do. No, we're not walking around the city sniffing houses with this dog because it won't be imprinted with no. marijuana. You know, could we take it in the school and check lockers? You know, I know we've got so, issues at the school. So that's part of the... Excuse, excuse me, me, sir. Point of order. Fair enough. With Canine ATF, they have other dogs available that are imprinted with marijuana. Okay. Um, that's part of the reason we went with Canine ATF if there's a need for additional dogs, we go to the school, they provide us the canines. So <clears throat> we uh, re research this, we're fully capable of doing the research. I'm fully behind Captain Myers who conducted the research into this and the direction we're pursuing is the best for the city right now. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you, Chair. Councilman. A follow-up question for the Chief. Uh, you mentioned the uh, marijuana in the schools. In the past, if someone was caught, a student was caught with marijuana, they were taken down to the police station and their parents come and pick them up or and now they're just issued a ticket is that correct that is part of the process correct wow That's sir excuse me one more outbreak and i'm gonna have to ask you to st step in the hallway i'm gonna step in the hallway now i'm gonna put some of the press here so i can have a discussion with them about this thank you thank you now not not taking them down to the police station um, was that a decision made by the, the uh, police department or school officials or? It was a decision made by the state of Michigan and we consulted with our council on how to proceed with handling marijuana arrests in the city of Dearborn Heights. Okay, all right, thank you. Hey. There, excuse me? I know. Did you have something, council? Uh, no, I was just mentioning something to the mayor about uh, something that might be a safety concern. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> the ayes have it. Next we have Public Service Administrator Selmy, Lewis, Lewis Manor Subdivision Resurfacing Program Design Authorization. Madam Chair. Councilman Abella. I move that we concur with D uh, DPW Director John Selmy uh, asking the department that has reviewed and concur with Wade Trim's letter dated March 13, 2019 to provide design engineering services for the resurfacing of the southern half of Lewis Manor subdivision as outlined in item 9D. Support. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Bazzi. <clears throat> Uh, with this, uh, Mr. Shelmy, can we, uh, uh, I know we've had some issues with uh, companies that have had bad quality with surfacing. Can we look at those and don't even advertise to those companies? I don't want to mention their name on here, but there have um, been a few. I'm, I'm somewhat aware of what has happened in the past. Uh, so uh, typically there's a bond 
or retainage withheld from them until the job is satisfa satisfactorily <coughs> completed. And this is the case, I think, if you're referring to a job on, in this particular area. Mm -hmm. And I know Dan Brooks up from White Trim has spoken to the contractor. They're going to meet out there, I believe, on Friday to work out those issues. Thank you. Great, thanks. Ma Madam Councilman Chair. Abdallah? Yeah. Did, John, um, could you get back with us though? Because we had some serious, serious concerns, and 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 so you know we look, went and looked. I went and looked at it myself, um, and and I'm not an expert on surfacing, but it, it was. And I think Dan, you looked at it too. Um, it's it's pretty bad. So we want to make sure that we we protect the residents just north of this particular area that's going to be designed, to make sure that the corrections are made this prior to this summer, hopefully this spring. Uh, and I know, we're I know, Dan, we talked about they were waiting until springtime to go ahead and do this, but I hope this issue gets corrected. We're meeting with them this week. Okay. And, uh, and, and can you get back with us maybe at the next council yep. meeting, if you don't mind? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Public Service Administrator Salmi, authorization for replacement of the Mayburn water main. Madam Chair. Councilman Constan. I move we concur with our new DPW Director, John Selmy, and authorize the replacement for the uh, Mayburn Street water main uh, as outlined in 9E. Second. Councilman Hicks Clayton supports it. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank ne you. Next, we have Public Service Administrator Selmy, Annual Safety Award Program Approval. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that we concur with Public Service Administrator John Selmy, uh, requesting permission to proceed with the Annual Safety Award Program, year-end prize program, with three prizes of 500, 300, and 200, which are awarded to the first and second and third place drawing winners. And this is as outlined in item 9F. Support. Supported by Councilman Constant. Um, I have a question for mm -hmm. Councilman Miyaki. Yes. Um, I have a question whether this proposal meets the municipal expenditures restrictions established by the state of Michigan. Do you know if it does? Uh, not without researching the issue, although I would note that this has been done for many, many understand, years. understand, but I had, quite, I had people call me and question that um, in regards to that. I would have to uh, research the issue, I'm sorry. Okay. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Um, to balance off of what you just said, I this has been referred back to the administration previously, I believe, and I know it's been done that way for years, by the way. That doesn't mean we always have to do it. And I, I fully support this, but I also, I guess in my mind, what you brought up is very important. Um, I think, in my opinion, I would amend the motion, but you have a motion on the floor, which has to be voted on unless <coughs> you amend it, refer back to the administration, because I think it does need to be explored a little bit more. But I want to see, in my humble opinion only, uh, a more of a holistic approach to healthy work environment. And I know as Elizabeth here, Sabota Perry, thank you for what you do as our HR director, because I know you really work at creating that office culture, that important, it's very important. It makes us want to come to work, you know? So thank you for that. But when I look at this program, and like you said, we've done it for years, it doesn't mean we always do it for years, but um, what about the other, you know, what do we do? I want to see what we do for all of our employees. You know, I know Director McIntyre sitting here in the front, you work very hard to do things for your staff in your office, so thank you for that. But again, I think Council Chair made a very good point, and I think <coughs> that would be my recommendation to refer it back and at least explore it. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. If there is City Council concern, then why don't we do this, and I don't mind uh, amending my motion, allow them to move forward with first, second, and third place drawing. I'm sorry, not drawing, but just first and second, and third place finishing. And then the dollar amount, the prizes, would be subject to final approval or research by our council. This way it allow them to keep the program moving, but not the dollar amount until later. And if, and if it ends up being okay, then they give them the dollar prize, two, three, whatever it is, month later. Because I, you know, if this is something that's good for employment, I think it's perfect. I support that too. I'll second that. Councilman, okay, so Councilman Wenzel? Uh, oh, why you have the motion? Let him, let him. Let him. Oh, uh, where does these uh, prize money come from? Uh, that's the finance director. 
the budget, the water budget. Yeah, general water fund. budget. My understanding of the program is that uh, all the employees that work in public works who do not get uh, any claims through the year are uh, put into a pool. And, and historically, as you have said, this is how it's done. It's a random draw, pull a name out of a hat, and it's, a, it's an incentive for them to work safe and work smart. Okay. What, what exactly is working safe and working smart? What, what, what's the criteria for finishing first, second, or third? It's a random draw out of a hat. You have not, you have not made any claims. You have not had any worker comp, comp claims, things of that nature. Okay. An incentive to follow all OSHA requirements is what it is. Okay. So it saves money. Okay, Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. A point of clarity, just because I know where it comes from in the general fund, but That's just because there was a comment we need for a record. Yeah, it is yeah. the general fund. All right. Correct Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Chair, if I may, uh, uh, specifically may the statute when you want me to review that under is again, I'm sorry. For the oh, let me read back what I had. Um, it would be under exp mis municipal expenditure restrictions established by the state of Michigan. I thought you mentioned the statute, but am I am I mistaken on that? Sorry, no, I didn't. Okay, very good. Thank you. No, that's why I was questioning you. You know, are we within Brian, where we're Brian. supposed to be on this? Very good. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. So I'd like to amend my motion to not include a dollar figure prize. Um, no prize is given out until such time that council, our council Miatki, has researched it, approved it, and in our council approval. Second. Okay. Second by Councilman Bazzi. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next Thank we you. have well, Park and Recreation Deputy Director Constant request to dispose of old tables and chairs. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Move to concur with Parks and Recreation Deputy Director Kim Constan and request to dispose of the items as outlined in 9G. Supported. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you. Um, looking at the list, it's a smaller list than before, so you're cleaning. Where'd you go? There you are. You were over here. You're cleaning house, apparently, which is great. Um, some of the items are broken and damaged, and so certainly those will be disposed of properly and hopefully recycled. Some of these items, otherwise that are maybe in working order, but we don't need or whatever may be, are those uh, being donated? If so, are they going to nonprofits or charitable organizations who are able to use the equipment? They will either be donated or shipped off to one of our other buildings. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, we have Park and Recreation Deputy Director Constant, new smart bus. Madam Chair. Councilman Odella. I move that we concur with Parks and Recreation Deputy Director Kim Constant uh, with a copy here of a letter from Smart regarding the attached contract for the new bus we will be receiving. The contract must be signed and executed before we can pick up the vehicle. And she is recommending that City Council authorize the mayor to sign the three copies of the vehicle lease agreement contract with original signatures and return them to uh, the deputy director to attach the insurance certificate and submit documents to SMART as outlined in item 9H. Support. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Odella. I just like, I know we did it at the beginning, but I just want to thank you again, and I'm sure the residents and uh, seniors in our area thank you. That's a beautiful job. I know it takes a lot to put a grant like this together, so good job. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next under ordinances and resolutions, Council Chairwoman Melanowski Maxwell and Council Pro Temp Bazzi, resolution City Council mm -hmm. contract with law firm of Alton West, Tawil, and Shrink PLC. Madam Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Um, I move the council to approve contract with the law firm of Otten West, uh, Tawil, and Shank, PLC. The 2018-2019 budget for the city of Dearborn Heights includes the $35,000 set aside for the legal services for the city council. And the Raymond Group is a party to the My Deal contract with the state of Michigan, and the city of Dearborn Heights is a member 
community under the My Deal capable of utilizing the same contractual terms as the state of Michigan. My Deal extended purchasing program, which allows Michigan units of government to use the state contracts to buy goods and services as outlined in 11A. I'd also like to add, um, this will be coming out of the budget line item 101-210-826.101. This was created for city council issues, legal issues. Um, it was taken during our budget hearings from item number 101-210-826-000 and set aside for this purpose. Second. Second by Councilwoman Hicks-Clayton. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman. Number one, this is taxpayer money. It's it's in our budget, but it's taxpayer money, so it has to be bid out. Number two, there's no definition of what this law firm, which is a, they represent healthcare concerns and uh, do uh, Medicare fraud and compliance type work. They're not CPAs. They're not licensed to do audits. Uh, what what exactly they're going to do? Um, uh, for the city to hire a law firm, you know, there's provisions in the charter and otherwise so that one branch of city government doesn't go out and hire a, uh, a law firm to fight another branch of city government because that would happen in every city and you would have uh, uh, cities going broke with, you know, maybe the council and the mayor uh, uh, fighting each other in court. Um, Matt Schenk, who is with this firm, was for a short time with uh, Wayne County, and I think he replaced Kurt Heisey, um, and uh, was highly criticized for the sweetheart deal uh, when he retired at like 48 or 49 and got a pension of 94000 a year. But I, I, I don't <coughs> see, number one, how this law firm could do any type of an audit of our city books. Okay, they're not doing an audit, if you read this correctly, they are just directing and appointing someone to do the audit per my deal, which we belong to for the state of Michigan. But why, why would we have a, why would we have this law firm? Uh, because that's what my deal requires us to do. And we and, are a member and of that. Yeah, there, so, so we get, all my deal does is we get the same rate the state gets because they're a state vendor. They're but we still state. have to go out for bid, but why would we ha hire a law firm, <coughs> somebody That's to do an what audit? what my deal requires us to do. I don't, I don't think Madam there's Chair. anything in my Madam deal Chair. that Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, real quick, first of all, as it's outlined in the resolution, many of the points were actually answered in the resolution. So uh, this is something that the city council already voted on and approved mm -hmm. in the budget. It's thirty-five thousand dollars. The comment with the the branches of government, then again, clearly executive, legislative, judicial, they're separate but by the charter, they're equal in power and certain pieces that they have responsibility and oversight of. So to, to that comment that they don't end up in court, well, they actually do. There are many cities that are actually doing that. Not that we want that, of course we don't want that. We want there to be harmony, but we also have a responsibility. As elected officials, we're sworn by oath to uphold the laws, to do what we you know, are elected to do by our residents, by our constituents who vote for us. So with that being said, the other piece, my deal is the, is the bidding process by the state of Michigan. No, it's not. So, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And yes, so therefore, is. we're not going to get, I don't want to debate anybody tonight. I'm allowed to share this opinion. I have the floor, and that was a point of order because you interrupted me. But with that being said, Madam Chair, that's all I have to say. Thank Madam you. Chair. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. Um, I had some concerns with this. Um, some of the concerns are this. Um, first of all, 35000 which is what we set aside. So if we use it for this particular case, we've wiped out any potential money that we could use for anything else in the future that we're going to need as a city council. That's one. Two, I do have a problem with the bidding process, no bidding in, in this particular case. And I get the resolution comes from you and Councilman Badzi. But you guys had basically selected this, this particular company, uh, Raymond Group, or I'm sorry, uh, Tawil, Shank, and Otomus, if I'm pronouncing it right. So that's a problem because we're not doing any type of study session or any type of bidding on this. Third thing, I looked into this particular, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, law firm, and 
everything I've seen, everything across the board says healthcare lawyers, malpractice, healthcare, malpractice. I mean, it, it was just purely reading it online. And then lastly, as I had a concern with the fiduciary, I'm sorry, with the, with the audit, the, the forensic audit, the problem I've got with it, and I'll just repeat again, we talked about how much it's going to cost, which rough cost that I've, uh, I've seen is going to be anywhere between 25000 and maybe 35000 or possibly even $40,000 a week. And that does not even include the employees, because keep in mind, when you're doing a forensic audit, if it, whoever's doing it is asking the employees of the city for stuff, and obviously they've got their own jobs that they've got to do, that's going to cost us even more money. My only suggestion, and I know we've already voted on it, but I'm just going to state it again. Give an opportunity for Plant Moran and administration to answer all the questions that you had on the resolution. So this way we don't spend the taxpayer dollar, just, just, just let it just uh, go away. I, I, just, I just don't think honestly this is a good idea or the forensic audit for that matter. At this point, not that we may not get there, we may get to a forensic audit initially, eventually, but the initial phase should be sitting down with Plant Moran, there was 10 questions that you guys had, I respect that, and asking them one by one and making sure they all get answered. If we're not satisfied with the answers, then we go to the next level. Madam Chair. All right, we're gonna go through the Robert Rules of Order. You're only allowed to comment twice, and I've told you this before. Madam Chair, okay. may I didn't speak? Go ahead, Mayor. Uh, I see this as a political witch hunt, using taxpayers' money for political purposes. Shame on all of you. I think it's illegal. The $35,000 could be used for police officers in the schools. We're looking for money to put officers in the schools. More crossing guards, increase senior citizens, and instead we're using it taxpayer money for a $35,000 witch hunt. I want to point out that you might want to use investigative services for yourself. I'm aware of five or six investigations by the FBI, the state police, and other agencies that are directed at you, the city council. And the only reason I didn't come to you and tell you about it is because you two are involved and some others. The only two that I'm not aware of being involved is Councilman Constant and Councilman Abdullah. Of course. And what I would strongly suggest as two of these are being instigated by employees under whistleblowing, I have directed them to go to the FBI and the Michigan State Police. And those investigative services are being done by the FBI and the Michigan State Police and the city's not funding it. So if you got wrongdoing, that's what you should do. But it's not wrongdoing, it's a political witch hunt. Okay, this is coming out of the city council budget. We have budgeted it in our own city council line item. And also separation of power dictates that the mayor cannot control how city council uses its budget. Well, you, this is illegal. You'll, we'll see. Madam okay, Chair, let's move on. And, and, and I'm sorry, is this my second time? Yes. Oh, okay, then I will not speak. To. So we Any we further questions? Speak twice or just yes. once, you're saying? Councilman? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I had the additional comments, and I did not make the comments gratuitously. There's a real problem with respect to this arrangement. And frankly, it just doesn't pass legal muster. You have an agreement that's being made with a law firm where there is no hourly rate, no basis or computation with respect to how they're supposed to get paid. You're just saying we're doing $35,000 and there's nothing that explains how it is they're supposed to get paid. Okay, Frankly, uh, it would be unethical. Can I make a comment real quick? Under my deal, we get the state rate. Do you know what the state rate is per hour? The it's $250. So who, who is supposed to end up getting the state rate? The law under firm? my do deal, the, the law they're firm? all covered under this. Well, th this is the problem. If the law firm is supposed to be doing this in order to engage an expert witness, then the law firm is not supposed to end up charging it and splitting the fee with respect to the accounting firm. It's unethical. Okay. If they, so if, right. they, if they are basically being engaged to end up providing this type of service, to in essence, sharing money with regard to expert witness fee, it's, it's totally inappropriate. Okay. And again, you, I mean, you. well, if I may, I mean, I, I would point out that that's one problem. We don't have anything from the law firm indicating how much it is that they would expect to end up getting paid. And it's, I, I can't imagine that the law firm has to end up being involved. My recommendation would be that 
if you want the Raymond group to end up being involved, you hire the Raymond group uh, okay. separately. Well, we have a resolution on the table. We need to vote on it okay. this time. Right, Madam Chair. You've had your two times through Robert's rule. I'm sorry. One time. Only one. Vote. Council Wenzel, did you have any comment? Because you haven't said anything. Well, <clears throat> um, the, my only concern was uh, the putting it out for bids, but I, I heard in the past that services don't have to be put out for bids. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This time, let's take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. I have Councilman Abdullah and Councilman Constant opposed. Council um, Minbazi, Melanowski, Hicks, Clayton, and Wenzel are in favor of it. It passes. Okay, next item is new business. We have the business license renewals for La Marina Auto Sales located at 8230 North Telegraph and Warren Valley Golf and Banquet Center located at 26116 Warren. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Move to approve the business license renewal applications as submitted in item 13A. Support. Supported by Councilman Odella. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next under new business is new solicitation license for Knights of Columbus number 3860, located at 26336 Park Street in Dearborn. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move we uh, uh, approve the solicitation license for the uh, Patrick O'Kelly Knights of Columbus Council 3860 in Dearborn uh, uh, as for their Tootsie Roll Drive that they do every year as outlined in 13B. <clears throat> Support. Supported by Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Is there any discussion? Madam Although, Chair. Yes. So um, this is for Council uh, Miatki. Uh, so when we have situations like this, I've, I've, I've always been concerned about the safety of the people soliciting in the middle of the street. Um, what, uh, I mean, it takes a lot of guts, obviously, with some, the way some drivers drive, but what protections do we have as a city in case, God forbid, God forbid, somebody gets hurt? We should not have exposure with regard to this. It would be a governmental function covered by governmental immunity. With respect to the individuals, they are also supposed to comply with the law. They should not be standing in the street while traffic is going. They should be coming to the side of the street in order to comply with state law in terms of not standing in the street while traffic. But a lot of times they are in the middle. They should not be in between that. lanes. That is correct, but they should not be doing that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Comes and they, they carry insurance. They have to have insurance to go out and do it. And then there was a attorney general opinion or something that said you can't sell out in the street and protect the good fellows and then they uh, there's legislation allowing it but they're, they've done it year after year and there hasn't been any bad accidents. Thank God. Yeah, thank you. Okay, is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next we have a permanent traffic control device number T-273 mm -hmm. no parking here to corner for the west side of Robinson from Hanover to Powers. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Move to approve the permanent traffic control device numbers T273, no parking here to corner, west side of Robinson from Hanover to Powers as outlined in 13C. Support. Support, Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have comments from council members. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, real quick, I've had quite a few residents call me about water quality, uh, in particular the South End. I've been in contact with DPW, and um, <clears throat> hopefully they'll go out and take a look. But I wanted to reiterate that the city of Dearborn Heights uses the Aqua site, which is a live, you know, reporting on water quality so but I would always encourage you if you continue to have a problem with your water quality the cloudiness it doesn't clear um, definitely safety is first bottle water whatever you need to do but make sure you contact DPW 
at 313-791-6000 uh, because that of course is uh, public health and safety is a top priority for all of us for our residents. The last thing I have is I want to go back to a comment that was made on 11A and I'm going to be very brief on this or try to be. Um, you know, political science 101, you know, when someone says they object to something and now they point a finger at somebody else and they try to do the blame game and say you're doing this wrong, FBI is coming for you, doing this, you have three fingers pointing back, to, back at you. And uh, using the term witch hunt is a scare tactic of fear and it's a form of deflection. An attempt to blame others, to turn eyes on others is also deflection. And that is not how we should conduct ourselves. We are all human beings. We all should be treated with respect and dignity no matter whether we agree with you or not. This is what it is to be civil, to agree to disagree. This is a lost art in society in general as well as in government. And I think it's time we move past that. Now, it's going to start with me. It's going to start with me because as a, <clears throat> I will tell you, as a person of faith, I believe we should do better. And, and that's my promise to you. I've served you, our residents, for eight years, the community for 10, and I tell you what, I will not be bullied. I will not allow anyone to be bullied in our community. Don't bully me. Thank you. Bully. Madam Chair. Councilman Bassey. Name uh, calling. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I point of order, the oh, name sorry. calling by the mayor should be retracted. He called me a bully, and that's simply untrue, and that's what a bully does. Okay, okay, point of order for everybody. Let's just let's keep this civil. It's the end of the meeting. We're here to conduct Thank some you, business. Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Um, okay, so I got a call from one of the residents or somebody that actually, it's funny, he, they came in to pay. Uh, I guess there was something with a concrete issue in front of their house. So they came to the city and they end up tripping and getting hurt on city property. So if we're preaching to residents, like, hey, you gotta fix your sidewalk, why aren't we fixing our city hall sidewalk? That's, I mean, you gotta set a good example. If you're enforcing ordinance on residents, why aren't you enforcing it at the city hall? Ain't that the truth? Okay, point of order. All right, any, any other comments from council members? Councilman Constant. Just to echo what Councilman Abdullah said earlier, and I should have been able to say, regarding this, the spending on the, of the PEG money, I think what the City Council wants and what I heard my colleague, uh, Councilman Musket, say is to know each year how much money came in, 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 in fr cable franchise money, how much money was spent and what it was spent on. That's something different than a forensic audit, and number one and number two, that's something wholly different than uh, uh, what a, a law firm would be able to do. Uh, uh, people licensed to practice law, but with no degrees, expertise, or licenses in accounting. And um, it's, it's the money being spent as taxpayer money. The fact that it's on my deal means that the cities get it at the state rate, but that doesn't mean it goes out for bid. And the councilwoman Lisa Hicks Clayton's comment about there being three branches of government, we all know that. But for example, the city attorney, the city attorney has his duty to the city. We may feel, if we have a question or something for him, that he favors, let's say, for example, the administration, or but, uh, uh, and then he contracts with, uh, for example, Mark Roberts, who's with a larger firm. But we have to avoid. Uh, uh, one branch of government hiring, trying to hire attorneys to, to shoot uh, lobs at another branch of government because it eats up city money and litigation that uh, 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 if we want to know what, uh, how the money was spent, we ask our city auditors who are a big national company, who are licensed, who have restrictions, to tell us that information. That's the cheapest and simplest way to do it. Thank you. Councilman Wenzel? A um, couple things. I had a lot of calls from people who wanted to know when yard waste was going to be starting to pick up again. April 1st. First week in, first week in April. First week in April, okay. Also, um, uh, this uh, May 4th, we're having our 26th annual E Course Creek cleanup and rain garden maintenance at the uh, Richard A. Young Center. And uh, we're looking for uh, sponsors and volunteers. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m. and hopefully I'll get this on the city website. And then thanks to the generosity of our 
sponsors from last year. We were able to purchase new wheelbarrows, waders, gloves, spike poles to pick up paper, yard waste bags, offer lunch and refreshments to our volunteers along with complimentary t-shirts with sponsors' names on them. So we're looking for, uh, well last year we picked up almost two tons of trash including wheel uh, barrels, tires, picnic tables, bicycles and much more. Uh, the, the annual creek cleanup is a great community event bringing together residents from all around the city of Dearborn Heights and, neighbor, and neighboring communities. We have a large number of high school students that are also volunteers for this event. Hopefully this year's sponsorship proceeds will be able to buy new safety equipment, grappling hooks, rakes, and also lunch and t-shirts. Thank you so much for considering uh, sponsoring and attending this event. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to add on to that too. I've been doing the cleanup at the Ecorse Creek for a few years now and it really amazes me what we pull out of the creek. I usually get the creek end of it. And some of the things that we hook and we pull out of there, it's just amazes me how people took the time to go and throw these large items in that body of water yeah. and not just have curbside pickup. Okay, at this point, I'd like to open it up to public announcements for the community. Uh, hello, Council Chair and Mayor. I just wanted to talk about a quick item at the library. Next week will be the Spring Book Sale. Join us Thursday, April 4th from 10 a.m. to uh, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. as the friends once again clean out their closets and bring joy to bibliophiles everywhere. Feed the need to read next week. That's all for now. Thanks for your time and see you at the library. Thank you. I like that. It's awesome. Nice. Oh, sir, 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 sir. Sir, point of order. Thank you. Okay. Any other public announcements? Okay, at this point, I'm going to open it up for public comments. I'm going to ask. Nancy. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. You're not quick enough. All right. Uh, Nancy Breyer, uh, Colgate Street. And just to. Uh, again talk about our neighborhood association, South Dearborn Heights Civic Association. I'd like to take this time to thank Lee Gavin, our emergency manager who was able to come and speak at his own time to us uh, last Friday. He did a great job, thank you again. And I'd like everybody to know that the next meeting will be on April 12th, which is a Friday at the Richard Young Center at 6.30 p.m. And then when we get to me, I'll give you more details when we get closer as to the speakers. Uh, May 23rd, if you're planning ahead, will be the May meeting. We were switching to Thursday evenings, which are much nicer in the summertime than Friday nights. And we will be having those meetings at Ford Lanes, uh, the east entrance, and that will be from 7 to 9, and that starts May 23rd. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Any other um, public yes. announcements? This time I'd like to open up to public comments. Name, address, and three minutes. Suzanne Todd, Academy Street. I want to thank the council for being brave enough to stand up to the threats and do what's best for the city. I appreciate it. And another point, I'd just like to ask, um, the Old Orchard Pond, we paid, three, the city paid $350,000 towards restoring that pond. Is that correct? 250. 250. 250? And does that include Plant Moran's work on it? No. You mean weight trim? I'm sorry, weight trim, I get them mixed up. <coughs> weight trim, it includes it? Okay. I was just wondering if we could have, uh, since the they own that pond, I'm just wondering why the city can't give the Ecorse Creek cleanup people $250,000 to buy what they need. At least give something to those people that are putting their lives in danger going in that creek. <laughs> um, and I would also like to say that um, all that stuff that's being dumped in there is not from the uh, not uh, from uh, Dearborn Heights. I see. Uh, 
Mr. S uh, Sam is here, and he used to live on that end house right next to Heather Lane Park. And he used to police it because he told me that there were people that would come from other cities and dump in that creek. Okay, that explains it, because there is some pretty nasty stuff in there, let me tell you. Yeah, and so, but he used to do that, but his, his house was bought out because he was one of the flood victims. And I, I was always told him, I said, Sam, you gotta be careful because you never know somebody might harm you, but we don't have him there patrolling the creek anymore, so it's probably gonna get worse and worse. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? Two, we have three minutes, name and address. Hi, I'm Angela Venegas. Um, I live on Dwight Street. Um, last city council meeting was brought up again about the lights not working on Warren Avenue. Um, back in January, I almost hit a kid on my way to work. Um, I've been working since January 14th. I've made so many phone calls, and I just don't understand why the city really hasn't gotten involved. It's, it's just been months, and the safety of our smallest residents, our kids, you know, that's what's at stake here. It's very dangerous. Um, last week, I finally made some progress. I'm going to pass this on to you guys. Um, I got an email back finally from DT. I have four different supervisors working on it, and they guarantee me that the lights are going to be on this week sometime, hopefully. Um, I also got a lot of other problems that are going on in the city. When are our roads going to be replaced? It's horrible. You can't drive down the street. You guys are worried about lawsuits. You got kids riding their bikes. We have craters. We don't even have potholes anymore. They're craters. It's, impo it's impassable to get some of these streets. Sewer covers full of debris. People aren't picking up their sewer covers. I have two houses by me on Dwight Street, two houses off the corner. I'm not giving away people's addresses. I've turned them in since July of last year, and supposedly they complied. I, they still have construction debris in the backyards, papers everywhere. It's a mess. I've turned in vehicles without plates, insurance, no tags. They're still sitting in the driveways. Um, mm -hmm. Trees that are being cut down without permits, one on beach daily. People with three to four cars in their driveways. This isn't a used car lot. People live here in the residence. They have dealer plates on them. Trash days, everybody's cars still parked on the streets. Why'd you guys even put up a sign if you're not even gonna enforce the law? Okay, all right. Why do, we, why do we even have these ordinances? It just seems like people are doing whatever they want to do and, and aren't facing any consequences. Okay. And I would like to bring this up. We have a message from the mayor under maintenances and ordinances, and it reads, Dear fellow Dearborn Heights resident, one of the keys to help keeping Dearborn Heights a great place to live and work is ensuring each of our homes and yards are properly maintained. Clean, well-maintained neighborhoods do much more than just make our city a pleasant place to live. Neighborhoods whose homeowners perform routine maintenance on their structures and yards consistently enjoy lower crime rates and substantially higher property values. In some cases, the city has enforceable codes that maintain certain maintenance-related responsibilities, and I'm not going to go on and continue, but okay. stuff is not being taken care of. The city is dirty, it's disgusting, garages peeling, paint everywhere. And you know, Mr. Pleco, you're here to serve the community, and it just seems like the job isn't being done. And you, you really need to start working for the residents of the city. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Madam Chair, and if Hicks. I may, I just, um, Angela. Yes. Thank you, by the way. I want you, I wanted to share something real quick, because we've talked about this, in particular the lighting. Now, um, and this goes back to August, by the way, which is when the construction was done, 2018, okay. and the wires were cut, and that was the underlying issue. Oh, our DT government liaison, her name is Barbara, who has worked with me, and I provided updates on social media, play by play. Certainly, it's been a process to try to get it done. Thank you for your efforts. I try to keep everyone informed through social media and other ways to let you exactly the notes you have is similar to what I had shared because again the, the wires were cut during the construction when they repaved, resurfaced. Um, and I, I want you to know something. I do work for you and I, I live in the subdivision near there so I drive it often. I'm checking every time I drive it. Oh no, it's, it's, I drive and, it every morning in the And dark. what I want you to know what I've no, and I note and I journal and I call Barbara every week. Her name's Barbara. Call her every week. And right now, what I've noted is in front of Salvation Army is where the lights are out right now. There's and I two. Don't, yeah, yep. and I'm not sure if it's because. There's two by the golf yes, course. Yes, and so, again, we're you and I, we're on the same mission. Those are all the work yep. order numbers that yep. I've been given. Okay. So I want to thank you, though. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. 
Any other public comment? Three minutes. Name and address, please. Uh, Joe Hashem, 26560 Wilson Drive. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a question. I wish you can answer that for me, but I'm going to save that for all. Just since I have three minutes, I might ramble a lot ramble along for a little bit. Okay. I live in Dearborn Heights and I'm very proud of Dearborn Heights. There is some problems, but obviously I know some people complain about the streets. I live on Wilson Drive. It is not the best street in the world, but it is safe. Every time I've called the police, they were there within two minutes, probably less. I know that we've called the EMS quite a few times. I have four kids. They were always there. We live in a safe neighborhood. We live in a beautiful city. Let's be proud of that. Let's have somebody criticize things, specific things, but let them be proud of where they live. You don't see people, if you go to city councils or you watch other city councils, Birmingham, Canton, Plymouth, Dearborn, anywhere, they have issues, they all have problems, but they're proud from where they live. They're proud of their city. I'm proud of my city. I've been here since 1996, and hopefully I plan to die in this city. My only question, if you can answer for that for me, uh, Madam Chair, is, a little confused about service contracts. Do those have to go out to bids or do they not have to go to bids? Because I've heard it both ways and I'm not asking Mr. Mayatki for that. Can you answer that for me, Madam Chair? I think the council is requesting you to go out for bids for service contracts. I thought I heard earlier that service contracts do not have to go out for bids. That was Councilman Tom Wenzel. I just need to know. I know the legal description or the legal opinion is no. However, it seems like it's sometimes no, or most of the times no, sometimes it's yes. I just need an answer. I can research it and let you know then. I'd be happy to do that. Would you please? Yes, I would. Thank you. You all have a great night and have great uh, uh, proud of your city. We do live in this city after all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? Name, address, and you have three minutes, please. Michael Mason, 24395 Courier Street. I'm wondering what are we going to do about some of this other debris along the creek. It is constantly flooding. We have downed trees over it. I live on the creek. I have a neighbor who is 70 years old and cannot maintain the overgrowth coming from the city side or the county side, depending on who you talk to and who they want to place blame on. We need to do something about it. I can't do my entire block. I can't take care of every person unless the city council wants to pay me. I, I'm tired of having to clean up this mess. We've been promised, and the only thing that gets done is at the one area you guys are talking about. The rest of the creek gets ignored, and that's wrong. We all live there. It's a problem. We all should try to figure out something together. It has been three years since I've lived here, and not one person has done anything except myself. Trash builds up down there all the time. It, it's just... I've seen it myself. I know exactly it, what you're talking about. And, and I, I live on it. I wonder, too, why we didn't go further than the little area we do. I don't know because I, I, I just joined we, them. We, we, have, we have that beautiful walkway bridge we built there. Mm -hmm. That It's not even beautiful because it's junk everywhere. Well, go another quarter mile down, it's junk, debris, old trees, old logs, old, and nothing is ever done. I've lived there three years and have never seen a single person back there besides myself. And I would just like to know why. Okay. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks um, Thank you. It's nice to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you, We too, connected today on social media. Um, thank you for being here and taking time out of your schedule to be here. The, the creek issue is very much, a, this has been an issue for 50 or more years. Um, Ms. Todd in the back and shaking her head because she knows, you know. Um, well, we all pay the but, premium yep, of living do. on it. But what I want to remind, and I guess the, the this may be directed at our attorney, is there was a consent judgment by Judge Colombo, I believe, in 2010? No, Colombo no? has it now. It's okay, well, whoever it was at the time, Those that's semantics. Federal. There's a consent judgment, correct? Are you asking me? Yes. Yes. All right. Consent judgment holds Wayne County accountable for clearing out what's in between the banks. And they used to dredge. You do with it. But what about what's in between my fence but, and the bank? Okay, so so that is a city, if I'm correct. It is. You guys I'm don't asking, come back I'm there. asking. No. I'm asking. You're you're incorrect. Uh, I'll let the attorney. I would like an opinion from also the attorney. Maggie, would you like to Thank answer you. that? 
in terms of what you're referring to, no. The consent agreement basically, re or consent judgment, mm -hmm. basically requires the county to end up taking the remedial steps with regard to the project to take care of the creek. It doesn't necessarily impose any sort of maintenance requirements with regard to It was that. to eliminate the flooding down there and to get people consequently out of the flood insurance program so you can save oh, a lot of I money. ain't out of it. Oh. Madam Not, Chair, no, but two hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Madam Chair, real you quick, can't question. Oh, yeah, that that's a real number. It is. And if I may continue, real quick, please, um, Mr. Mason. I'm supposed to you. want to live in the city. So, real quick, the bottom line is there's issues that need to be addressed. <clears throat> and my understanding from our previous Tell DPW director that we as a city take care of what's on the banks. Right. No. Okay. Go ahead. Director McIntyre, please. You know, I, I do a lot of enforcement along mm -hmm. the creek, and I think what a lot of people uh, have assumed over the years mm -hmm. is that that city property it's or that it's county property. The truth of the matter is, there's if you fi if you go to assessing and you look at the flat maps, you'll see that believe it or not, a lot of folks actually own that property. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's several spots along the creek um, where, say, a business on Van Morn and a resident, uh, someone in a residence, actually the properties come together and half of it's owned by the business. And, and now, it doesn't take away from the fact that uh, people dump in the creek, no doubt about it. And I agree with Ms. Todd, I think obviously we, we caught someone dumping in the creek, remember uh, not too long ago, a, a grease company that yes. was dumping correctly. But I will also tell you that our ordinance folks, when they're driving around, they, they do see a lot of residents dumping there too. They might be dumping things that they don't think are a big deal. Like I, I myself turned a corner on Hanover and I watched a gentleman take his uh, lawnmower bag, walk right over and stood on the overpass. Mm -hmm. And I, I pulled up to him and I said to him, I said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm just dumping the grass in here. I go, but you're dumping it in the creek. They, I said, that's not your property. <laughs> not to mention there's a sign there that says no dumping. So I think the smart thing to do is in, 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 in several situations, some of that property is actually owned by the resident that orders that property there. I, I'm not, I, I can't speak to all of it, but I was surprised myself when I started looking at this, particularly some of these businesses that we're trying to enforce and cleaning up beyond their parking lot that was or their parking area behind. well we're two city you know i'm a city block courier and then i believe it's and over the next one over the street where the bridge yeah. the little i know your wife oh i i know you do and i i respect what you guys do i'm just wondering I, I what can i do as a citizen well, who lives there let's first why don't you come in tomorrow and i'll walk you to or one day when you can when you're available okay. and your schedule permits let's go down to assessing and let's look at the property lines and see who actually Okay, because I mean, I'm not worried in, as much in front of back of my house because I've already cleaned it up because I was tired of waiting. Yeah. I'm worried about the guy three doors down who's 70 years old who's coming over to me <laughs> offering me money to take a t chainsaw to trees that are down that are about to fall on his garage and then him saying, well, let me call the city. Let me call the county. Oh, the city's saying it's the county. The county's saying it's the city. And it's a blame game back and forth. And we're caught in the middle. And he's saying, well, I can't have you go back there because what if something happens? So the county has no one wants to take responsibility. That's why I'm bringing it here. The county has rights to the drain, the drain piece of, the, of what the creek is, not necessarily <clears throat> the, the property that where the drain is. I mean, there's a whole area I maintain. It's mm -hmm. it's a rather large area that I maintain. If you want to come in, I'll be glad to take you. Okay, to Jack, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And Madam Chair, just real Council quick. Hicks. Thank you, Director thank McIntyre, you. for taking the initiative to work through this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mason, for being here. What I want to maybe consider or suggest, because what I hear you saying is that there's all these pieces, these moving parts. You got the county, you got the city, and everybody's trying and to say, people. well, I'm not doing that or there's doing that everyone get together have a focus group bring them all to the table all the stakeholders identify the problems right we get 100 Develop people a plan. we can knock it out on a weekend because you said you have to identify right because who does what and who owns what yeah, identify last year mm -hmm. came, there was a lot of conversation one weekend on and facebook and some of you might remember yeah. this and we ended up going out bill zimmer <laughs> ended up sending a crew out there 
to take care of a situation that really wasn't our responsibility, yeah. but we did it anyways. It was at that time it was, a, and the mayor. Yeah, I think part of the. Thing to do. This woman yeah. was so yeah, in yeah, situation. and thank you for that. So it is about quality of life for our residents, and that's what we do. So thank you. Identify the problem, develop the plan. Again, bring the stakeholders to the table. That's your residents, the county, the city, and develop a timeline to get it done. But there is no access for a great majority of them people without ripping up their. So that, well, I guess once we became aware of what... Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, three yeah. things. Number one, they, if you, Councilwoman Hicks-Clayton is talking about the consent decree because of the overflow and then the chapter, also the chapter 8 petition that the city of Dearborn Heights filed. The, 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 the Ecorse Creek, because it's a creek and not a river, it's under the jurisdiction of the county. So Wayne County is supposed to help clear it and maintain it. Number two, we've been told that by Friends of the Rouge and other people that log jams and things like that were supposed to leave because that's yeah. natural. I got it too. But number long. three, we've been doing the Ecorse Creek cleanup for years and years. But if there's a problem on the creek, you're supposed to contact Wayne County and Wayne County will either send somebody out or no but they defer it to blame it, it, it's deferred on both sides blame so well let's way, I'll continue let's give director McIntyre a chance and see what oh, you can no, find not, out that would be a great I think absolutely because okay thank you do we have any other public comments Okay. Your name, address, and you have three minutes, please. Hi, I'm Naja, um, and I live on Whitefield Street. I was here a couple weeks ago regarding the schools and the situation with pick up or drop off and pick up. Um, similar to what you're saying, Miss um, Hicks Clayton, um, about getting together. We mentioned that the last time we met. Um, the last time I was here, um, I'm just wondering because I was at the uh, school board meeting yesterday. Has anybody taken any steps to getting together to meet to come up with some sort of solution? Yes, we. Uh, after you brought the situation to me, I called the superintendent. We had a conversation. Yeah. And I agreed to. Uh, it, I turned it over to our uh, police chief. And um, the school superintendent said that she would put a group together and meet with the police department and they're working together. So they've already met or they have not met yet? The chief is there. I don't know if you've met yet or not. He would have to answer. Mr. That. Mr. Mayor? I mean, I'm sorry, Chief. I, I'd just like to suggest, though, if we're going to be doing something like this, and I think it's a very good idea to sit down together, but obviously we should have some resident mm -hmm. involvement. Right, and that's why, that's too. kind of why I'm I don't have here. a disagreement with that, but the, the, why don't we let the Chief indicate? Okay, one more, one more question, and I'm sure he can probably answer that as well. Um, with the crossing guards, um, they're employed through the city? Correct. Okay. We're so when the they are not there, when they're not able to make it, what happens? Because, like, the past two days, our crossing guard was not there. In the morning, there were police officers. Um, but like yesterday, I arrived early enough and realized there was nobody there. And a couple of other parents were assisting kindergarten, excuse me, kindergartners to cross the street because the parents couldn't see. And so there was nobody there to cross the children after school. Yeah. And pick, drop off or pick up at the end of the day is way more congested than drop off in the morning. And again, today, there was nobody there after school. So at the very least, if the school, I mean, I don't know how they handle informing. Is, are, is the principal notified that the crossing guard won't be there? Maybe then she could ask parents, you know, to volunteer because it was completely a disaster and unsafe for the kids. My, well, this is what uh, we refer to as an unfunded mandate. The state legislature put the obligation of crossing guards on municipalities and townships mm -hmm. with no funding source. We pay for them and it's been very difficult. It's okay. a job that people will not consistently, and sometimes they quit without really telling us. Right. But if we are uh, aware of the fact, uh, uh, officer is assigned, but if right. you, they were there in the morning, but yeah, not after school. And and I don't. We'll check into what happened in that particular thing, but it could be that uh, the communication had not gotten. But 
we've had a real difficult time trying to find crossing guards because it's only you know it's a time in the morning and a time in the afternoon so right. it's You're looking at people who are retired somebody who's just correct I, un I understand that like, like I said Jerry is has been great I mean he's only he's elderly and he's you know he, but he's does a great as much as he can do but again I don't I just I'm assuming that maybe he wasn't feeling well because right. but so they were aware that he was not gonna be there because somebody was there in the morning but nobody was there at the most chaotic time of the day mm -hmm. I must say there have been no tickets because I haven't seen any police at the schools at all which was not my you know we want the police there we just wanted them in a different manner um, but um, I know you had mentioned earlier about you know needing to you know have their presence there or find the funding to have them there but they've been there all along they were there all along they were just handing out tickets and not assisting with the most important, the most crucial part of having our kids crossing and, and just mm -hmm. the chaos of keeping the traffic going. And so. Well, well I think our police department does an excellent job. I'm not. And, and, and the point is that. Aside from this, I'm not, you know. Right. This, this is just, this is one part of our police department. And I'm not put bashing our police department. I'm just talking about this part, which is a very important part for parents and for our kids and the safety of the kids. Right. But, but, but be aware that the responsibility for how traffic yes. is the responsibility of each school, whether it's a charter school I, or a public school or a parochial I school. I understand that. So we we're working with them. In fact, the uh, chief asked me and suggested the uh, at Crestwood the Horseshoe Drive, and I think that's an excellent idea to provide relief and get the cars off of Beach Daily. A lot of other ideas. I mean, just there's between all of these schools. And again, I understand it doesn't fall on the, the city, but this is where I was hoping to get the city and the schools together because without one or the other, it, right. you can't. You can't. You can't come up with a solution. You need the city to be involved. I, I pledged my full cooperation with the superintendent in anything that we could do awesome. as a city. And the superintendent and I work very well together. But I don't claim to have expertise on traffic control. I also know that Crestwood, because I was told by one of the school board members, paid for a study. Mm -hmm. That study, I don't believe, has ever gotten no. released. Mm -mm. And we have tried to work with the school district. We've also supplied the golf course as a relief, mm -hmm. and which helps because if that wasn't there for Riverside, it would be—I I don't even know what exactly. They would do. But yeah. we'd like to know the study and get our traffic department, who has access to the AAA, the Michigan State Police, and see. But we'd like to. But I'm leaving that up to the, our traffic department. Right. We got a great department, a great chief and let them work on a solution rather than us Long imposing. Long overdue. So right, I am yeah, not opposed to residents being involved, but that, I really think, has to be coordinated with the school district. Yeah, let's just, let's give them a chance and see if they can make it work. Yeah, and this, this, and I was just following up because, because too, yes, I know, so. I know. I was just following up because I was here. And, but and Najat, just so you know, there's been a lot of conversations just so you know, between different departments. And that's why so, I'm... And, and you, you started it, so... I'm it's, and the ball and is I, rolling. And I... And I You'll see me again. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, is there any other public comments? Please step to the microphone. Your name, address, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Madam Chairwoman, I'm going to be following Robert's rules of order, so I'm going to be talking directly to you and only you. Okay. Okay. I'm here to give you a report as to what's gone on in the last two weeks since the council meeting. Okay. Okay. In the last two weeks, I've had conversations uh, with all three branches of state government. Out of those discussions, I have been asked, not wearing her hat as the Chief Justice on the lawyer side, but as the head court administrator for the state in charge of the judicial branch, her clerk has, and I'm still wrapping my hands around it, 
The clerk of the chief justice has asked me to prepare a memo to her that basically, for lack of a better way of putting it, is what in the hell is going on in the judicial system in Wayne and Macomb counties, the two main counties that I've had problems with. And I mean, this is the right way to do this. And so I want to let the council know exactly what I'm doing. I want to let, you know, so that's one part of it. Now, Mayor Plicko can cry all day long, but the fact of the matter is, is that I've had extensive discussions with the chief, elections matter. And I've had, uh, and our new AG is a lesbian. So I think I've piqued their interest because the chief of criminal investigation with the attorney general's office has asked me to brief a memo about Mayor Paletko, what's going on here with the city, and quite frankly, this is the way I feel about it. I think the, you know, we've talked about three branches of government. I think the executive branch is corrupt as all get out. I don't know what's going on with the judicial branch. I don't care what that guy says down there. He's been here for 40 years. I am interested, and I'm actually rather impressed tonight, Madam Chairman, how you took control of the meeting. You ran the meeting. You didn't let people run roughshod over you. And if there's any, I mean, look, I was a parliamentarian to the United States Senate for two years. If I can help so that, because that's what you need. You need basic governance. And don't listen to uh, the corporate counsel down here. He's useless as far as you're concerned because he's working for a corrupt mayor and being paid for you. So don't listen to him when you're, I'm, and are my three minutes up? No, no, I'm gonna ask you to be respectful and not yes. bash anybody. Yes, no here. worries. Okay, thank you. I apologize, Madam Chair. I've got bigger fish to fry. Also in those two weeks, I just found out on Friday that the DEA and Berkeley police are going to be arresting Dr. Paul Benson, the head of the largest HIV clinic and, and medical practice in the state, for illegally using his ex-partner's DEA pad or his prescription pad, writing under another doctor's prescriptions. And so since Friday, I've been dealing with the fact that you know, as someone that's a leader in the LGBT community, we're going to have about, his patient load is probably two to 3,000 patients. And considering that when I tried to get a primary care physician here in Dearborn Heights, I have to go up into Oakland County. I went through about five people, and all of them basically use the old-fashioned, well, we're a family group. We don't deal with people with HIV and things like that. So, you know, these are my concerns. Yep. Um, the last big thing, so you know that I have small fish to fry in Lansing, is that there is a new scandal involving MSU, the State HIV Commission. Uh, and basically, I've got 40 people wrapped up where every two months the State HIV Commission goes and has a big sex party on MSU's campus. And they refused to even deal with it. So, you know, all I had to do was mention three words. Larry Nasser, former judge in WTF. And they finally responded. It's been six months since the MSU police responded. Okay. And well, so I'm only bringing this up, and it is relevant, because I want you to know how busy I am. Your time is up. So call me anytime. Can I, may I leave my phone number on the record so someone, anyone can call me? That's fine. 313-888-1165. And, and Chairwoman, I will be coming every two weeks to watch the council meetings and give you an update as things go along. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? Any further public comment? Yeah. Go ahead. Name, address, in three minutes, please. Hopefully it's okay. I meant to get up during announcements, but I, uh, I got sidetracked. That's fine. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, National Animal Control Officers Week starts April 8th. Uh, we've been honoring the animal control officers in our department for the last three years uh, when the um, nation recognizes all of their animal control officers. Uh, we'll be doing different events for them. We have some activities for them, but more, most importantly, uh, the public is welcome to come on Wednesday, April 10th to our uh, Ordinance and Animal Control Department. We're gonna have an open house from two to four. You can meet our officers. We're gonna have some of the tools of the trade available for you. Uh, we'll let you try to snare a, a stuffed animal maybe. And uh, <laughs> you can also see the new truck that, we, uh, that we've uh, purchased and we've had converted. There's still some detailing that has to happen on the inside, but we're up and running with it. So um, April 10th, Wednesday from two to four. Come on out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have a question for the, uh, Director McIntyre. You might be able to answer this. I had a, a, a couple questions from residents about what they do with uh, paint cans, cans of paint. 
Do you know yeah, what on the, those? if you go to the Wayne County uh, hazardous waste uh, page, um, the paint cans you can take to um, Wayne County Community College on North Line Road. It's the last drop that they have of their summer season. There's one at Henry Ford, uh, one in the Westland Shopping Mall, and then the final one is uh, at the, uh, I don't know the date, but I'll make sure I, I bring it the next time, or I'll have I'll someone, we'll post it. Okay. Yeah, you, you can also add kitty litter. You can put them out and you can put kitty litter as long as they're dried. But what's nice about the Wayne County one, if you can hang on to them till then, is you pull up. I did it two years ago. There's probably, I'm not exaggerating, 250 cars in line when I got there. And I thought, oh, this is going to be crazy. I was, I literally pulled in. The system was so organized. Maybe we should hire them to help with the school situation. I'm not, I've never seen something so efficient in my life. I was in and out in less than 20 minutes. Uh, you just open up your hood. That's the day where you can bring electronics, paint, all the liquids and things like that. They direct you where to go. You pull into this line and then they transfer you over here. You're in and out really quickly. So I'll make sure, the dates I know, um, we post them on our city page. So well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other public comments? Move Do I hear a motion to end our meeting? Move to adjourn. Councilman Support. Supported by Councilman Abdella. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.